YouTube, Zookeeper. At least take nine, maybe 10, 11, or 12. I'm not really sure anymore. As we know, the Prius Gen 2 can charge a battery. How do we know that? I'm talking high voltage battery. Well, because it's installed in a Prius, they have 201 volt batteries in this vintage 2005. And we know the battery doesn't go dead after you drive it. So it has to be able to keep the charge up. So logically, there's got to be some way, because the only power to come to charge the battery is from the MG2 or MG1. So if I connect a three-phase motor to here, I should be able to get power on the DC side to charge the battery with, or maybe from MG2. Um, I know I can generate electricity from MG2. You can do regen and recharge the battery, so we know that's possible. Uh, I've So in this little test, what I've done is I've got my leaf relay board. I'm only using the positive side, the negative side is not connected, and the pre-charge resistor. We're not going to discuss or develop or build up anything on the input side. We're just going to simulate charging a high voltage battery um, using the MG1 inputs and the connections to the battery as it would normally, close to normally be installed in the vehicle. So a typical way you'd want to do this is, well, you'd want to have the car off, parked, in park. So I have here my forward and reverse signal wires, inputs to the vehicle control unit tied together electrically. That indicates park. And then um, I have no power to the vehicle control unit. The ground is disconnected, which powers up the inverter and the vehicle control unit. I'm using the fluke meter to measure the voltage into the main DC positive contactor. And uh, the ground side is just connected here to the same black wire on the input side. So I'm checking to see if voltage makes it through, essentially. Okay? And then over here, I have the XTEC meter measuring the battery voltage of this high voltage 12 volt battery. And again, I'm just trying to see if I have a power path through to charge here. I have my benchtop meter set at 15 volts. So I'll simulate just plugging it in. Right now I have no voltage coming through here. Okay, I walk up to the wall, I plug in my charging cord, my extension cord, to my 120, 240 volt socket. What happens? Hmm. I get a little teeny bit of voltage through here. Leakage, I'll call it. But I really don't get much of anything, and I'm not taking my battery past 12.45 volts. It's not doing anything, it's just sitting there. Okay. So what that tells me is, with the inverter off, key off, I can't charge the battery. Which makes sense because the electronics in the inverter allow for regen, which is three-phase power backwards through it to charge the battery. Makes sense that if the inverter is not powered up, you wouldn't be able to pass electricity through it because that wouldn't be a normal operating condition for the vehicle. So I'm going to simulate turning the ignition on, and what I should also do is I should disconnect this, because that's the 12 volt into the vehicle control unit, so let's separate the vehicle control unit from the um, uh, inverter converter. I should also uh, point out that I have the pre-charge resistor, brown wire wired to ground um, over here. And I have the red wire, power wire, wired to this blue wire right here, which you really can't see. Um, and it's tied to 12 volts to simulate 
um, what I've seen the uh, internet famous EV BMW guy um, a apparently when you turn his vehicles to on it, it sounds like it activates the precharge resistor and then you turn it to start and it closes the main contactors that's kind of how it seems to me that it works so I wired mine this way okay so we have the vehicle control unit disconnected electrically I'm going to power up only the inverter converter and see if I get power through You heard the little relay click, that's my pre-charge relay. So you can see I'm applying 15.1 volts across here now. And I am getting some battery charging. Okay, so what that tells me is I literally do not have to have the vehicle control unit powered up at all to get battery charging functionality. Now, these two wires are the pre-charge and DC switch controls. Um, as you can see, I'm not using those. But what if I were to activate the DC switch right here? I should get closer to 15 volts. And again, these are powered up together down here on the blue wire. And the one ground goes over to here. And this ground is just to complete the circuit for the DC switch. There we go. We're getting 13.9. 14 volts okay so with the vehicle control unit completely out of the circuit at quote unquote 12 volt nominal voltage I can supply power through the inverter to the battery without having this connected at all so that's an initial test now I do need to check this with higher voltages which I have a plan to do it gets more dangerous as you get above 60 volts. I think I'm going to try to stay around 48 and see if I get a different answer. But for now, all I've shown is with only the inverter converter powered up, I can simply use, in this case it's a DC source, to go back and charge a, uh, another DC source. So that's a good test. Anyway, um, folks, please... You know, remember, add a comment. Uh, if you have any questions, I, I try to read every comment that's posted. I try to respond to as many of them as I can. Please remember to like, um, share this with your friends, um, subscribe, and considering uh, some Patreon support, we really do appreciate it. Anyway, um, I guess it's Zookeeper out for now, and uh, we'll do some more testing when we get our high voltage uh, input uh, ready to go. Take care. Have a great day.